Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode two of the world famous podcast, Pile It On. I'm your host, Elliot Morgan, and I'm here with my co host, Grace Helbig. That's me. That's you. And this is a podcast about what, Grace? Oh, it's about um, things that we've watched uh, that we have many thoughts and feelings and opinions about. In particular, Married at First Sight. Married at First Sight. Lifetime smash hit. Uh, The world needs a podcast and not just a podcast, but one that's incredibly niche uh, that um, few people will really be able to relate to. (laughs) It is the uh, it's like we're at the stage in life where Mm -hmm. we can uh, do things that are so specific and to our interests. And that way we're emotionally safeguarded for when people are like. I, I don't like this. the yeah. <laughs> yeah. When people are like, I can't get into this, I can say, I know, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. I was uh I was watching a little bit of the first episode and um Good for you. It actually I didn't hate it. That's great. I know you told me that. I was uh by proxy proud of us because I don't like to rewatch or re listen to things that I've done. Nope, me neither. Yeah. So apologies that this might have a lot of um opinions that have already been expressed last week i do think though hmm. yeah because there's a lot we're gonna get into yeah. with <sighs> last week's epi- or last night's episode i wow. tell you what yeah tell, tell you me, me tell me i'll what. tell you what yeah. her name's katie um but i uh i was thinking and i do think mm-hmm. it's arguably more enjoyable to listen to this podcast if you have never seen really the show. <laughs> okay because well, it's more it makes it makes the characters that we're talking about i think seem more cartoonish than or, they would be or and that's like, nice yeah it gives this like uh, giant mythology to these larger than yes. life uh emotionally complex human beings yes. that are just humans that signed up for a reality television show yeah and we get to distill them into uh yeah caricatures of themselves which they do which the show does too so it's perfect yeah and if anything this just showcases how ridiculous we are in how in-depth we get into our thoughts about oh, this. Oh, it's too much. Yeah. This, so if uh, if you guys think we say anything bad about um, anyone on this show, just consider the fact that we are sitting here thinking about this show so deeply. <laughs> and so that reflects kind of negatively on us, yeah. too. We understand the scope of this and what this is. Yeah. There's a sweet, there is a sweetness that I don't know will... We'll, uh, play well all the time with mm. our sense of humor but uh, i hope people understand that we mean no no, no direct offense when i say that certain people are evil or, or something yeah yeah Th- that's a specific <laughs> Why, choice how could of... anybody be offended by that no evil of course is a very loving term <laughs> i am still processing what we watched last night And both of us looked at each other. Uh, You asked me if I had gathered my thoughts, and I said, nope. And you said the same. So this is the perfect way to start a very rambly, chaotic episode about a very rambly, chaotic episode of Married at First Sight. And uh, I'm like anxious to even start talking about it because it was so much. And I honestly wasn't prepared for it to be this much last night. And I'm very excited that it was this much last night. It was it like it was like they were coming at us with a vengeance in Mm -hmm. terms of editing. At one point watching it, I was like, I feel like the editor was just like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to throw everything into this uh, episode to make it interesting because it's the first one without Zach and Mindy, which Which are the, the... star couple for lack of a better term yeah um i thought that we would be very much lacking in drama and very missing out on the emotional roller coaster that is zach and mindy and boy was i wrong you were wrong it look all the other couples said hold my beer absent zach and mindy Mm -hmm. i got this episode yep you want to see crazy here it is so if you have not seen the show married at first sight is a reality show on lifetime where people uh marry a stranger they see them for the first time walking down the aisle mm-hmm. and they have to see if they can make it work and after eight weeks they decide whether or not they're going to stay married uh, or if they're going to get a divorce they go on a honeymoon they meet their parents they move in together they learn about their finances and uh, and whether or not they're compatible based on how experts have paired them with what they said they wanted in a partner expert being a very strange term to use this season it's fun too because now that we're doing this I have more permission to let myself fully deep dive on the internet after the episode to see what everyone's kind of quacking about and uh people are very 
steamed with yeah. the experts this season. Yeah, there's this little bit of um, like, uh, you know, it's such a niche thing inherently. And then, I, yeah, like after we did the first episode, mm-hmm. I was like, maybe my thoughts on this are not in line with mm-hmm. what the average viewer maybe of the we're show. being too harsh yeah and uh no. it turns out no yeah. no we're being actually very soft and gentle and um supportive yeah. more than a lot of other people Thus far, are yeah. uh this episode they go on a couple's retreat they finally put all of the the couples in a beautiful, seemingly haunted house in the middle of this farm country uh-huh. uh, in outside of DC, and we just see what happens because I guess the uh, hypothesis here is that putting all the couples together gets them a little bit out of their bubbles, sure. so they c- and they can all commiserate with each other and connect or disconnect from each other in yes. di- it, with different people that are all going through the same experience that they're going through. Yeah. So the, it's an opportunity for camaraderie, but the, it, it's... Uh, it's an opportunity for camaraderie and for them to hear themselves, for them to be like, oh, okay, so my wife, quote unquote, is crazy, or my husband, quote unquote, is uh, a maniac. Right. And they can see the other couples go, yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, they are crazy. Yes, that is nuts. No, you shouldn't be experiencing this. <laughs> yeah, and they also get to watch how the other couples handle the actual production side of things. Yeah. Which, oh, spoilers. It's, some of them don't handle it well. No, they don't. And so on this particular episode, we have four couples. Four correct? couples are left standing out of our five. Rest in peace, Zach and Mindy. Yes. I don't think you're gone forever, but you were absent in this episode. But you were not missed because, like we said, all the other couples brought their crazy to this weird six-bedroom house in the middle of a who knows what. It was like it became a different show. Yes. Like okay. it was, it, it was, uh, the term in television is jump the shark. Yeah. And that's yeah. what this episode was. We were doing our normal banter, making fun of like talking to each other while we were watching. And then there was just like a half hour of pure silence as we watched it fall apart in front of us that neither one of us knew exactly what to say. I at. went somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> and that. I came back. I forgot you were in the room with me. Yeah. And I forgot who I was. And then I popped oh. out of it and I was like, you did your classic. Grace, one of the alternative titles we had for uh, for this podcast was mm-hmm. uh, What's Happening? Because yeah. that's or your. What was the plan? What was the plan? Yeah. 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 What was the plan? Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, cool. you were you were full force with the uh, w- What's happening? I wanted to ask everyone what was the plan. <laughs> well, with the cast, the producers, the poor PAs that had to do stuff outside of their job descriptions this episode. Let's just get into it. So we start with, let's start with Katie and Derek. Okay. Because they are the couple that shows up at the house first. And basically they show them all on their drive to this undisclosed location yes. so we get a little um you know car conversations happening Ugh. and katie is in a bad mood katie is in a bad mood let's mm-hmm. talk about katie and yeah. Derek for a moment let's give them a little uh how would you describe Derek? <laughs> Because Derek, God bless him. There's such a sweetness to Derek. And I I said this last night. Saccharin. There's saccharin sweet. And I think he's exactly how he is on camera, off camera. I feel like he's one of the most authentic people on the show. Because (laughs) you get exactly what you think you're going to get from him. And he's not hiding anything. He's not putting on a persona. He's just being exactly who he is, which is pretty... um, Good. I, he's a good kid. He's just not. He's not. Uh, he's not a a bad boy. The world hasn't gotten into him yet. No, he's like every everyone knows a Derek in yeah. their lives, and uh, and they love him, and they love him because he's consistently himself. But Katie uh, might be the one person that doesn't love Derek because yes. he's not toxic enough for her i think he's non-toxic and that's why she's so turned off by him uh-huh. so they're in their car oh, what the last night's episode was like they listened to the podcast that we did 
and they listened to my BS about the unconscious uh-huh. and were like, we're going to dial up. It was like... They were like, this one's for Elliot. I felt like so vindicated. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I took called it. See, she just... Eve, I mean, okay, yeah, I'll let you keep... Yeah, well, okay, so, so that's Derek. So they're in the car ride going down okay. and Katie's already nitpicking what exactly was she even talking oh, about it was in the car a, ride? a poem he wrote in high school grace yes the thing called that, sight uh, yeah a thing that most girls obviously get caught up in when they first start wooing a partner is i like to see um all of your previous artistic endeavors as you are a non-fully functioned teenager yes and take and it to I, heart yeah I, I use that as the full mapping over who you are currently as an adult human being i wrote because i was a theater kid i wrote a bunch don't of, do this to me right now to like me, this. Grace, this is bad oh no i i wrote a series of monologues because i was a theater kid and theater mm-hmm. kids are cool and rad and super yep. well adjusted but um <laughs> And yeah, very cool with not seeking attention in any way. No, no, got everything they need fully formed, mm-hmm. and uh, their their souls are uh, intact. But mm-hmm. um, I wrote this series of monologues called the Antagonist Monologues. And it was all just standalone monologues that were from the perspective of various bad guys, but they were all like serial killers. <laughs> if you found that in a, a yeah garage somewhere, you would call the cops and be like, yeah. "This is terrifying." So. Um, what Katie found was so sweet and so mm-hmm. nice and pure, but she was upset about it because why is it that he was able to write a poem like that mm-hmm. in high school? But Expressing not- so much love and passion and in their relationship, he's just like a stale piece of toast. Yes. That and shits constantly, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And one of the primary uh, themes in this couple's relationship is that um, Derek has never been in love before. Yes. And that's so, the big conundrum. Yeah. So when she sees this poem in one of the previous episodes, she's like, why, why how can you write something this profound when you've never experienced it firsthand? And his answer <laughs> was, uh, I pretended. And uh, <laughs> I think that's one of the best answers in the world for a dude to say about a, a love poem. So uh, I, I just kind of figured that's what it would feel I, like. I assume that that's like what love feels like. And I want that sort of thing, which is a very sweet very honest answer but it was not enough for her so now everything is comparative in her brain she is now at the point where she clearly has some deeper issues with his character and the fact that he's pretty grounded and so that's not exciting enough for her so she's now doing that like um, what are those like heat seeking uh, that's heat seeking missiles yeah that she's like seeking out any toxicity that she can grab onto with him and because there is none she is now creating it in the scenario so she was already upset uh, with him but then uh, and then she says that in the past she's had relationships where she's always been the one initiating she keeps using the word initiate 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 and uh, that she's always been the one initiating things and she wished guys would like take the reins and like you know take care of her and do all of that and he's not stepping up to that plate and then he he says yeah you deserve that you're a catch and that catches her off guard she's mad about that and, well yeah. no she says thank you oh does she she okay. says thank you thank it's you for saying that for me to keep track okay yeah thank you for saying that and it's like she's almost mad that he has appeased her (laughs) that he said the right thing Mm -hmm. and she doesn't know it's like her program scrambles and she doesn't know how she just malfunctions as soon as she gets there because he's just being nice and he's listening to her and like offering uh like consolation that is appropriate he uh he does a thing that is so infuriating for people who want to get into a fight, which is he, it's so, it's ironic because like, and this is what I do really love about the show is watching people fight and then be like this, that, what, nope, 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 nope. Like fighting, I don't think is the worst thing in the world, but I do think it's always optional Mm -hmm. and it takes two people for it to become a fight. Yeah. Uh, And Katie is always wanting it to become a fight, but when Derek refuses to allow it to become a fight, it's not giving her what she wants, yeah. even though what she thinks she wants is the subject matter of whatever she's fighting about. It's real fun. It's real fun. Like you said, it's two people to to have an actual fight. And because he's not doing it, she has to be both people. And so she's mad at him that he's making her have to be the one fighting yep. 
her fight and against her at the same time. And it's just so, ooh, a lot. But I love that they get to the house first. They go, they explore this weird layout of this giant home. And then they clearly, you can tell, they don't have cell phone reception. So they're all a little panicky, a little edgy. And they just immediately make vodka Red Bulls. You yes. can tell that they're I was like, I see. And Red Bull sees Red Bull. Okay, yep. good for you guys. You're getting into it because they're clearly... They stock their liquor supply because that's yeah. good reality TV is give them this yep. and a house and no cell service and just see what happens. Yeah, they stock their liquor cabinet with like the mid middle shelf. Yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it just looks like they're having a house party and they just yeah. graduated college. And they also they had I felt bad for them because. You know, when you're the first couple to arrive mm-hmm. at a thing where other couples are going to be there, you get the joy of picking the bedroom that you want, but you also end up drinking earlier yeah. and becoming, uh, you know, oftentimes miserable the next day. Yeah, and- Katie got a, um, got a false start, I think, on the drinking, and yeah. it does not play out eventually. But then uh, Jessica and Austin show up. So Jessica and Austin are beautiful, beautiful creatures. They are, uh, they're the mo- they're like normal came to life. Yeah, they're um, just normal yeah. and they're just fine and their relationship is the most actual like successful one yes. seeming and it's just and that's why they don't show it a, a lot because it's like yeah we're still good we still like each other oh yeah they uh they had a whole segment in last night's episode where they went to a cave oh, um which was very me. awful to watch yeah we, well i get claustrophobic mm-hmm. and so just watching that gave me anxiety yeah it was very um it was beautiful and also don't need to ever go to that no it was somewhere in some place you know yeah how caves they are. gave them excursions yeah, they gave me an excursion, and it was like a five-minute package, and you're like, okay. They yeah. they edited the rest of the episode, needed five minutes, and yeah. then went to, told them to go to a cave, basically. Yeah, exactly. So they get there, and then Jessica and Katie are trying to have like a heart-to-heart outside, and Katie's clearly a little toasty, because all of a sudden she oh, just yeah. starts going off on her TED Talk about how he doesn't initiate anything. And this is the foreshadowing of this one sentence he doesn't initiate anything yes is her entire thesis throughout the rest of the episode yeah it's fun when you can see people on reality tv shows sort of cling to phrases that they think are going to be like accepted like zach uh the the gem that he is as a person would lean on the uh we, I just need attraction to grow. Like, attraction just needs to grow. Yeah. And we need, I'm just trying to give that level of attraction, like, a chance to grow. Because and you're giving him the benefit of the doubt by saying he has a phrase. No, he has monologues that yeah, yeah. you could parse together to make a phrase. Oh, yeah. But they're all over the place. Yeah, it's a fatty, a fatty cut of me. It's <laughs> everything he speaks with. Okay, so uh, Jessica and Austin get there. They're, you know, doing fine. It's like, and then her, Jessica and Katie talking is like watching two uh midwestern moms going to applebee's having like dollar margaritas it's perfect (laughs) and uh then who shows up next i think it's i think taylor and brandon get there next okay yes because yeah because mika and michael drove at night because they had the dashboard light on the whole time yes (laughs) or the overhead light Uh, yeah in their car (laughs) but gopros taylor and brandon get there next and we get to see guess what the 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 water has not steadied in their relationship at all nor did i expect it to because they're already getting into the car to drive down with guess what a problem taylor i guess went out the night before and ended up falling asleep in like her friend's hotel room and didn't text appropriately to brandon so brandon does what every healthy male does he, he he cites the problem and then he just buries it deep inside of him okay, and doesn't yeah. give her an opportunity to have a conversation about it right um instead in the car he puts his airpods in and then falls asleep yeah. and lets her drive and she's clearly like hung over driving which i just appreciate that her party girl has been like fully revealed because yeah. they edited her to be beauty and brains up until now and now it's like <laughs> yeah let the girl that wanted to be on love island come out uh-huh yeah show us your true colors yeah and also taylor's a party girl so she's like yeah we're going here and there's gonna be booze yeah i'm gonna have a great time my marriage who gives a fuck about that no, no one cares <laughs> yeah yeah uh, she yeah and then she does the post thing she'll post on the social media and mm-hmm. she's just she's that 
part of the millennial generation that does seem really tied to the phone and really tied to the the followers and the ca- the likes and the comments and you said what on social like it's so integrated into their real world lives that it's a uh, it's it seems stressful like it seems it's, like an yeah. incredibly uh, uh, stressful way to live to constantly be just like I posted it like getting your yeah your uh, I don't know I don't know what it is it's it's a lot though I will as people that oh. are supposed to be concerned with that side of their job the social media side yeah watching her kind of obsession with it yeah. can be stressful based on our personal experience yes. with that kind it, of stuff it's an empty cup I yeah, promise you I don't know. you won't care but also you get to see that Taylor is like. She wants to be a reality TV person. She knows how it works. She knows all the steps involved. She watches probably reality television. She sought it out. Like she's, this is a goal she's going after. And you get to see that more and more and more and more. Uh, But she gets there. Brandon goes off by himself, like does his own thing. He clearly in a pouty mood nothing good is going to come of it he also says that he has to work that weekend so clearly production has scheduled this weekend for them to go on this couple's retreat he has to work but they're not allowing him to get out of it so he's already coming in pissed off at the entire experience rather than just taylor like he's already pissed. he's always hated it he's he doesn't want to be on this program anymore but he signed the paperwork so he can only blame himself at this point, but he doesn't. He blames everyone around him. Yeah, which oof, there's a lot to dive into here, Grace. <laughs> yeah, there's so uh, much. <laughs> so you you are doing a great job of summarizing because when it got into the later part of the episode, oh. to be honest with you, <clears throat> I don't even want to dive into it too much because it's yeah. I'm still stressed out about it, yeah. and it felt like being beat. To, to like just being beat with a bat the entire time after yeah. a while because I was like, wait, so now he's lying about this and then Michael's uh-huh. lying, of course, and all this stuff. But like real quick, who do you think is the more in this episode? Mm-hmm. There's two couples that stole the show. Okay, I would say Taylor and Brandon. Uh-huh. And I would say Katie and Derek. Yes. All right, Katie and Derek, uh, their own thing. Yeah. Kind of um, more con- contrast with them because Derek's a little bit more Mr. Nice Guy and Katie, especially in this episode, mm-hmm. was a little bit more insane. And mm-hmm. then you you have Brandon and Taylor who both right. seem kind of like off their rockers a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, I am a dude and can, can relate to mm-hmm. the dudes a little bit more sometimes. Who do you think was the more interesting or crazy mm-hmm. storyline? I, well... Uh, oh, gosh, sorry, folks. <laughs> you're getting crazy. Um... I it's interesting because they both um, have freak outs, but in two entirely different worlds, because yeah. Katie is upset with Derek. Katie is upset with her partner. Yes. And then Derek is there. Derek is <laughs> physically present. Yeah. Uh, Brandon. Derek is, is the Tulsi Gabbard of uh, <laughs> Married at First Sight. Yeah. Brandon keeps pulling down the curtain, showing you production and saying, I'm upset with all of this. Yes. Taylor is what you want me to be upset with, but the reality is I'm upset with this entire experience oh, and yeah. everyone involved. Whereas Katie is upset. She keeps the curtains up still and is upset with yeah. Brandon. Like she's uh, not calling out the fourth wall. Yeah. And, and, and She's and, playing the game. She's playing the game, which also to me means that she's actually in a relationship that she cares about if she's upset with Derek. Like the fact that Brandon is upset with wait, production. Wait, wait. Well, oh, Katie is upset. Katie, yeah. yeah. Katie is actually having turmoil with the person she's been set up with on the show. She's not upset with the show. Right. Brandon's upset with the show. So Taylor's just a byproduct of, uh, is like an easy target for him to get mad at. But he's just like, no, you're not going to, you're not going to do this. You're not going to box me in, yes. in this narrative with her. I'm going to show everyone all of this. Yeah. Brandon went to burn the village down. Basically, yes. Yeah. Because he didn't like some, the village head or something like he, he, but I will, I, I think for that reason, what you're saying, Katie and Derek were way more interesting because it was uh, like, yeah. I don't need to see the screaming yeah. at a producer. Katie and stuff. Derek were way more interesting for the actual what the show is supposed to be about. Yeah. But as someone that likes reality TV, I think Brendan's more interesting because I like to see I'm always fascinated because, you know, they present the show to you as if this is like people's real reactions in real time. But you don't realize that it's produced. So a lot of their reactions are happening because of this bubble that they're being 
put into mm -hmm. and so i like that brandon's calling out the people that put up the bubble yeah that's interesting to me but they're they're interesting for different reasons so they get there uh, and Brandon goes, you know, off by himself. He's already doing the bare minimum of what he's supposed to do. He's basically just like a ticking time bomb, just fuming, pouting and in his own little world yeah. and giving production nothing to work with. Nope. Like he's on a mission to ruin the show, yes. not to ruin his marriage. Uh, Katie's on a mission to ruin her marriage. Yes. Um, and then Mika and Michael show up. They have a car ride down that clearly... They got stuck in traffic. And the best part is that you pointed out that while they're in the car and they're like uh, having their conversations of like where they're at, what their expectations are of the weekend. Elliot's just like, there's a cameraman. And you can see the car that's pulling up next to them just has a guy leaning out of the yeah. window on the passenger side with a giant camera yeah. trying to get more <laughs> footage of them in the car. And it's just so silly to it's, watch. It's a guy who looks like he was cast as cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He has like the facial hair, the big burly thing, oh, and he's just all of it. completely expressionless. But also, to their credit, you know, for to produce this show, they have to get the camera angles of them, and they're driving at night, so they have them driving with their overhead lights oh, on, perfect. which is so stressful as yeah. a human being to go, I'm driving in traffic with full overhead lights on, so everyone else on this road is looking at us. Yes, let's have a conversation let's, now about our relationship. Let's have an intimate conversation right now. There's a charm there that's like an un, like very unspoken, where you're like, oh, it, there's a, it's kind of like love is blind, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about at some point. Oh, yeah. And have talked about ad nauseum, so there's not a lot of uh, stuff to mine there. But like, it's a higher budget show. There's something about kind of the jankiness yeah. of Married at First Sight that makes it really appealing. That kind of does, yeah, it, it does add to the uh, authenticity sometimes. Where you're like, yeah, no wonder he doesn't want to talk, or she's not good mm -hmm. at communicating right now because she's got a literal overhead light. Yeah, shining while she's down trying to drive in traffic. And a 45 year old cameraman just staring at her <laughs> just while she drives hanging 45. hanging out of a minivan yeah. next to her. And she's supposed <laughs> to pretend like everything's normal. Yeah. Uh, but they don't have a very good conversation. She's, he's closed off, you know. I think he's, I think he's still reeling from the fact that he's been called out for like fabricating things and embellishing things. And so he's doing a little bit of what Brandon does. He's like not going to give them anything to work with. So he's just not really talking at all. Yeah. So they get to the house. Mika just walks in like half a mile ahead of him into yeah. the house. She just walks straight in. Oh, it's hilarious. She's like, she's doing it. She's walking. She walks, she's a doll. She walks straight in. And then Michael walks straight in and goes to like the back closet where the liquor is with Brandon and just takes like Captain Morgan or something and fills up like an entire pint glass mm -hmm. of it. It was Jack Daniels and he filled yeah. up a, a mason jar uh, <laughs> like like three quarters of the way full. To yeah. That made me audibly go, oh no. I was like, it was like too much whiskey. And then I went, here we go. Yeah. And it's It was, this whole episode was an anti-drinking ad a hundred percent. Like it was, the, sh the series is as a whole, but that particular episode was like, Ugh. this is going <clears> to be, because as much as you want to perform for reality TV and you want to, you know, put your best foot forward so that the audience and people and, and internet comedians yeah. can't mock you. Uh, when you consume that amount of alcohol, the inhibitions go down and you're not going to come off well if you uh, are an angry drunk or if you're a But I do, uh, under, like, drunk. seeing him do that, I'm like, yep, I've been there. Like, if you're going to be in a situation like that oh. and you go straight to, like, yeah. and you've been in traffic for probably four hours because mm -hmm. DC traffic... With Mika. With Mika and an overhead light on. <laughs> yeah, you got to self-medicate a little bit when you get there. If you're being grilled by your wife on TV with an overhead light, that's actually broiling. She's <laughs> broiling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they get there. Michael and Brandon sit outside by a fire and have next to no conversation, <laughs> which I love because this is their form of protesting. And I think it's so fabulous that it's like they're clearly the cameraman Oh, I just wish I could see the cameraman's face of being like, they're not talking to it. They refuse to talk about anything. Yeah. Uh, and then the the two suburban moms have made tacos for dinner for everyone. So everyone like goes to the dinner <laughs> what table. What was that tweet you saw that was oh, like? Oh, I saw a tweet that was like, this is the, uh, the worst part of this whole episode. And it's just a photo, a screen grab of the tacos that yeah, they Yeah, which made. was mostly sour cream, which yeah. I was like, that looks pretty good. It looks to pretty me, good but... to me. 
so they sit down. They try to have like a formal dinner, I guess. Uh, Jessica's doing a very, the very mom thing of like gathering everyone together and making the tacos and giving everyone, mm-hmm. making sure everyone's taken care of. And Taylor sits down at dinner with them. Michael and Damon are still outside uh, doing, talking about absolutely nothing. Michael and Damon? Or, I'm sorry, Michael and Brandon. Yeah. Um, and then they start taking tequila shots at the dinner table, the most brightly lit dinner table in the history of lit dinner tables. Oh, it's wonderful, yeah. And then you they see... They all look like they're in the machine in Willy Wonka that makes you tiny. You know that machine? No. Okay, yeah, I that's trust how that the show's great. lit. It's a it's an all-white room, and they go in the way. They, well, I do... I love that. We've talked about how bright the lighting is on this show. It's so unbelievable. Uh, that it makes me uncomfortable because it feels like you're in like a doctor's office or a dentist's office all the time. Yeah. And when uh, Katie and Derek first get there, they go through and you can see all the production lights that are lighting yeah. all the rooms already. And I'm like, the lighting budget on this show must be out of control. Yeah, it's like they uh, they lividly ha- are hate shadows. Yeah. No part of your body will <laughs> yeah. ever have be in the dark. Uh, so they start taking a tequila shot at dinner. Brandon doesn't want to take one because he, has to, move. he has to work the following day and he's Uh doing this smiling passive aggressive like well i have to work all day tomorrow like i'm not gonna do it and taylor's trying to get party girl taylor's coming out she's trying to get him to take it he won't so he leaves it's awkward and then uh derek and taylor start having like drunk fun banter at the table oh wait wait but though in the toast there was a great moment where they were like um Let's, uh, what was it that they, because Brandon made an aside comment that was like, they're like, yeah, cheers to us and, you know, getting through this. Oh, oh, they said, oh, yeah, Derek said, cheers to us and um, getting away from all, like, the trouble or something. And uh, uh, Brandon. Brandon said something like, you think this is getting away from it? Yeah, like, oh, we're getting out of it? Oh, okay, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he was learning for the first time, and I was like, oh, boy. He's no, Brandon's a- like, no, we're in it. We, yeah. This isn't an escape. This isn't a vacation. This is now I've clocked in to do this bullshit yep. right now. And he's not <laughs> playing the game. <laughs> he hates it. Okay, so Derek and Taylor start having, like, funny banter. Now, and- Derek and Taylor, to recap, Derek is the nice guy, and yeah. Taylor is the Instagram model. From These are two different relations, two different couples. Two different couples. Guy and girl. Uh oh. Yeah, at the table with all the other couples, you know, um, uh, Brandon and Michael aside. And they start just like joking around. It's not even making, it's not even funny jokes. It's just like they're drunk and they're laughing and they have, they just keep panning over to Katie who's just seething. And you can watch the drunken, hazy brain working so hard to construct all the problems with everything she's seeing and taylor's getting drunk and saying like oh brandon's so great you have like the funniest husband and uh katie starts going no no she starts shutting it down in her brain and then taylor says the line that is the greatest thing she's ever said in the history of things (laughs) i think she's ever said she says He's so regular. That's why he's funny. Oh, oh I love that line. It she hurt. nailed it. It she, hurt. But she's right that he's just exactly himself and he's so normal. And that's why he's so goofy and oh. funny to everyone. And I'm sure in the real world, they're so like different. Yep. That she's like uh, a girl like that say laughing and making him think he's being funny. Right. And then qualifying it by saying he's so regular <laughs> is like schoolyard <laughs> like boy ugly like at, but Derek is so sweet that he's just like huh? yeah. he's like this shit I am I'm pretty regular. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, yeah, I yeah you're not wrong. And then Katie gets so mad that she storms out of the table. She curses a bunch. I forget exactly what she says but she's you can have some of my Red Bull, of course. Welcome. Now now it's a party. Now mm. I feel like we're at that ghost house in the middle of the, the horse fields. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the ghost house in the horse. Oh, man, I forgot about that. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, so she storms off. She goes to some random bedroom in this Escher painting of a house, and then um, <laughs> Jessica and Mika go after her to have some girl talk. Of course. Taylor stays at the table. Um Derek stays at the table, a major issue Scandal. for Katie. 
uh, she starts they go to some random closet and the girls are all talking and then she just starts going off about how she does everything in the relationship he doesn't initiate anything and that she can't see him getting there and that basically it's just like everything she's been repeating to herself she repeats again for everyone to hear yeah it's someone who made up their mind a long 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 Mm -hmm. time ago who's still trying to pretend that they're like in a dilemma about it yeah and they're consoling her they end up with a group hug i don't even know if anything gets accomplished they come back to the table taylor she's upset that derek didn't like come after her and figure out what was going on derek can do nothing correct right now unfortunately he's 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 the evil one yeah he's bad he's doing bad uh then they talk some more and then you can see taylor starts talking about her relationship and like the sacrifices that they have to make and how uh what she's experiencing with brandon and her and katie's just sitting there like glassy eyed and you could see the barometer building itself back up again and then she leaves again she can't Take it. And this Which, by the way, have you ever like. Probably been... yes. Yeah, I know. I won't go there. <laughs> I'm going to reframe it real quick. But being in a group setting or at a table in a house and then someone getting so upset that they storm off. One of the best experiences in life. If you're not the person storming off. Oh, and yeah. You're, like if you're the uh, what's the other couple's name? The normies. The, the Jessica big... and Austin. Jessica and Austin. The sweet, 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 sweet people. Yeah. Um, they uh, to be them in that scenario to be the couple we've been in situations where we've been the couple that's oh, do, do doing well, okay and which is a nice feeling which and is very nice. bonding and for sure. especially if you think you're more of the insane sure. people but they which were I've been there yeah yeah exactly and it, that's the worst side to yeah. be on but man to be those guys yeah. and to be watching that happen like if i I don't know that they appreciated how wonderful that moment is when somebody they, gets so angry that they walk off, but I would have been having the time of my life. Well, Jessica does say, she's like, that's why I don't share what's going on with Austin and I because we're good and it feels like I'm bragging. So it seems like we're yeah. hiding things, but really, and I get, and that's very like gracious of her and very real to be like, we're doing fine, so I'm not going to rub that in their faces if people are having issues. Yeah. So being the friend that gets to listen to all the other issues is such a treat oh. that I'm sure she's like, this weekend's working out great for me. Yep. I'm having a great time. But anyway, uh, Katie storms off again. This time, Derek goes after her, and he's he can do no right in this scenario. He tries to go after there. He asks her politely if she wants to have a conversation, and she's saying no, which really means yes. She wants to be chased. And uh, no, she doesn't want to have a conversation. Yeah, she wants to have a fight. She wants to have a fight, and he doesn't. He's very like calm, and he's still like keeping it together. He's not mad at her in any way. And she storms into the bedroom, and then she storms out the front door. She tells him, "Don't follow me. Don't follow me," which means follow me, follow me. <laughs> he opens the door, and she's four feet away, and she's just sitting on the front <laughs> stairs with her wine. Don't follow me on my journey to that stoop. <laughs> I'm gonna be out here, and I want you to be out here. And then he goes and he tries to talk to her and she gets into her thing of like, yeah. I'm initiating. He he apologizes. He goes, I'm sorry if I wasn't giving you attention. I'm sorry if I didn't come out and talk to you when you stormed off. Like he apologizes immediately for things that he probably didn't even do wrong. No, he was just, he was just, he had that mentality of like, if I apologize, it'll that make it better. It. And it's like what she wants is to. She wants him to fight with her. Yeah. And he even says, oh, earlier in the episode, he's sitting down with Austin and he Austin's asking him how he's doing. He's like, women are hard to understand because she says she doesn't want to fight. And then sometimes she'll get upset and she'll say, why won't you just fight with me? And he's like, I can't win. Yeah. So she's laid out this gauntlet verbally to him yep. already. She's told him the paradox in which he is existing in. Oh, man. And that classic, like, uh, it, it all gets sort of, uh, they love to throw in... Um, like tropes like stereotypes of relationships you know Mm -hmm. and like husband and wife and like the the normal um like archetypical traits but he kind of immediately goes into uh the uh i lost my train of thought what was it (laughs) i don't know that red bull hit me i was trying to follow no no it was he does the oh um the women are crazy oh yeah he said he's like no offense but you women be crazy yeah and he's like drunk and being sweet but also he's like I don't know how to understand yeah. you. Also, sometimes, though, just 
your woman, not your woman, but mm-hmm. your wife is the crazy one. Yeah. Um, I think she's only used to watching her parents fight when she's younger. And that's her only way she knows to communicate. Yeah. And the fact that he's not built for that, she's so turned off by it because uh-huh. it's so unfamiliar to have like healthy, normal, you can't grounded just be conversations. Okay. Yeah. And so they talk outside. She like gets she just like emotionally vomits a bunch of the stuff she's been saying over and over and over again drunk, yeah drunk uh anger ramble and then i don't remember exactly when but i think she like at some point just put herself to bed like they start cleaning up the dinner <laughs> the amazing tacos that they made and then she just like puts herself under this giant comforter in her bed yeah giant white comforter she's like a marshmallow she looks like when uh kids put fake bodies in their yeah. beds to make it look like they're playing hooky <laughs> like they're still sleeping but they sneak out like she that's what it looked like when he went to the bed yeah. and they tried to get a scene of them well, him trying to talk to her before they fell asleep because he wants to resolve the fight before they fall asleep and she's just it looks like someone just put a stack of pillows under this giant duvet comforter yeah <laughs> you uh you started bursting out laughing and you were like are you saying this because basically Derek is apologizing to what could could be a stack of pillows which could and be a bunch no of throw proof. pillows i don't know if that was katie or if it was just... i said it was andrew the pa that yeah. Was like... <laughs> yeah that was taking a nap <laughs> oh i god bless him and he falls asleep in a room that's completely brightly lit <laughs> like everyone normally does and then you think the night is winding down there you think that all the drunken stupor has ended but no brandon and taylor bring us to a new level a level not hitherto for unseen in, at Mary the, on the first sight. Whoa. Was that a line from one of your monologues? I never know school? what that hither hitherto. I've hence, never heard that. Henceforth. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> Sounds it, fun. it reached a level that I've never seen on the show. This is of, where it uh, got weird. That shit craziness. Well, she comes out. He's still by the fire and she's clearly drunk and she's trying to talk to him. And then they start talking about. Um, Instagram posts and a client that he works for because he works for he's like a beer salesman so I think he works for bars and and a beer company and she like also a, works as like a, a drink girl like a rep I yeah. Think, yeah and so I think they have a lot of crossover in their world outside of the show and so they start talking about some Instagram posts that she was tagged in and she's trying to have a drunk conversation with him and then he finally because this is the perfect time he's been seething and sitting yep. in silence about her sleeping at this hotel the night before and he brings it up now and then they escalate into this giant fight where she says the only reason she went out that night is because she dropped him off and so she was waiting for him to get done and so she went out with her friends and then he ended up going home and she was still out with her friends and so it was I don't even know what the argument was about necessarily. You know yeah, there's an interesting... I'm curious on your thoughts on this, mm-hmm. Grace. There is a... Uh, her defense that she has at one point is like, I wouldn't have hung out with my friends if you hadn't gone to work. Yeah. So because you had to go to work, therefore, obviously, I'm going to go hang out and get drunk with my friends. Yeah. That... What do you think of that? Oh, it's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, it's... Uh, there's a lot of problems with this situation that it's like... Uh, yeah, the I only went out because I was helping you by taking you to work and like waiting for you or something. Also, we only know bits and pieces, so it's hard to make a fully formed opinion because yeah. I don't know exactly what happened. But it sounds like she's saying... I did something for you, so I went out with my friends, so you can't get mad at me for going out with my friends because that's tied oh, into okay. me helping you do something. But you can go out with your friends and then come home and sleep in your house. With your husband, yeah. yeah. I uh, I didn't get quite that. It sounded to me not like uh, she had done him a favor by taking him to work, mm. but he had almost... Um, selfishly mm. gone to work. Oh, and rather maybe it was than, that. See, yeah, I'm not totally sure. It seemed like the vibe I got was like, it was one of those things where it's like, well, if you're just going to leave me alone at night to my own devices, then the oh. obvious next choice is to go hang out with my friends. And I was like, imagining what that would be like if it were true. Mm. And that's a crazy mental yeah. situation being like, oh, I if I'm going to go to work, I right, called in. Um, I don't want to go, or a factor in my brain is that my partner is going to go out and get yeah. trashed or blitzed. Well, her. she wants their cake and wants to eat the cake. She loves cake. She loves cake. Um, but then this is where the crazy starts, because they get ramped up into an argument that isn't going anywhere, and then Brandon basically just loses his cool, doesn't want anything to do with the show right now, wants to stop recording. He starts to take off his microphone. A producer runs over and tells him, don't touch that mic, because... 
equipment is expensive, y'all. And I've learned on sets that the polite thing to do, you don't own any of it, and nor are you educated in how to handle expensive equipment. So you don't touch a mic. You let the sound guy or a producer handle that because you don't own that yes. stuff. He fully disregards it like a child throwing a temper tantrum. He tries to rip off his mic. This producer is trying to tell him. They catch later a conversation that's happening in the corner of the house that uh, Michael is or um, I'm sorry, Brandon is saying that he doesn't want anything to do with the show. And the producer is saying, I told you already what I can, what I can and cannot control. I cannot tell the cameras to stop recording. Yeah. Um, Because he's telling them to like turn the cameras. Pure reality producer. um, Who knows how true that is? Trick. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows how true any. 100% not true. That's what I would say. (laughs) That's such a bullshit reality (laughs) producer being like, because what they these reality producers do uh, mm. is they pretend to be your friend yeah. when in actuality they have a job to do, yeah. which is to create good television. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when those two things butt heads, when being your buddy and creating good TV are at odds, the thing that wins is creating a good scene. And so they, they do that kind of thing where they're like, the only thing I can't do, do anything you need, let me know. Yeah. But the one thing I can't do is tell the cameras to turn off because right. it's just it's it's freeing them of the responsibility basically but it's also on paper probably what they signed up for sure. that like if you are coming to set uh our cameras will be rolling 24 hours yes. a day so you have signed away that this is what you will be participating mm-hmm. in so he starts calling him a piece of shit to the producer there's a camera catching all of this happening there's like production people walking all around uh, the producer's like getting into it with him. He's like, I don't know what he's doing, trying to stare me down. It's the weirdest scene to the point that I was like, how is there no security or anyone? Get, it was like, uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I was like, where's the who, who's in charge that's not shutting this down? Because yeah. you could see the producers starting to get like pulled in by Brandon, and I, I in my mind, my professional brain was just like, don't do it, don't do it. Be a professional. Be a professional. Yep. Be a professional. Don't start saying things to him because now you're on camera too. Uh, and he starts calling him a piece of shit. This other woman producer comes in and tries to like move the scene. The uh, Brandon calls. Brandon calls the producer yeah, a piece of the shit. Produ- yeah, the producer yeah. held his own very yeah. well. He's a reality. He's producer. just like I don't know what he's trying to stare me down. He's kept like staring at him. He's like I'll be right here. And then the female producer comes out and says like okay we'll wrap that in that room and he's like you're as much a piece of shit as he is and he starts going off on her he he was just like guns blazing a sprinkler system just vitriol sprayed on everyone around him because he's like a little kid trapped like he can't leave he doesn't have transportation he doesn't have cell service he's literally imprisoned in this haunted mansion house doesn't give a crap about any of the other people isn't like i'm one of them and they're my friends and i can confide in them which is what they want so they can get it on camera right and yeah seeing somebody fight with a producer is a weird breaking of the fourth wall it's also like a sacred no of like you don't you don't be nice you don't be mean to people who are doing their jobs even if you don't like what their job is and I don't, I, this is where I'm so confused because I, I, he seems smart in the sense that he knows when to shut off to not give them footage that they think they're going to get him like looking forlorn at the fire. He says like, you're not going to get what you want here. I'm going to leave. Yeah. And, but by doing that, by throwing this temper tantrum, you're giving them everything and more that they could want. Uh-huh. And so I don't know if he realizes that or not. If he thinks that they're not going to use him throwing a hissy fit off camera. Yeah. On camera. I, I don't know. So then and then the <laughs> camera picks up of him and Taylor talking without microphones in their bedroom. And the camera comes in and Taylor clearly like freezes because this was a private conversation that was happening between her and Brandon. And then when the camera comes in, she's like, guys, guys. OK. And then. It feels like you can see her drunk brain. Oh, God. I was so... I know. It feels like you can see her drunk brain, like, calculating, okay, I'm on camera now. I'm going to... I have to keep him in this scene because I need to be on this television show and he can't shut down and how do I keep this going? He puts himself in the bathroom. Yeah. This gets so weird. She goes into the bathroom with him. And it's so uncomfortable because there's a camera only on this closed door on the bathroom and you hear, like, slamming. And that sort of scared me. I was like, "Uh oh, this show has entered new territory that makes me uncomfortable. And I don't know how we're going to podcast about this because this might be way deeper, bigger of an Uh issue. Uh, And so she won't move, apparently, in the bathroom to let him out. 
And so he, I guess, takes his phone for security purposes and starts filming her standing in front of him because he's not going to try and do anything to get her out mm-hmm. of the way, but he wants everyone to see like he's being held hostage yes. in this bathroom. And then they start having a conversation that's so strange to me. One, that they got this footage from him, from someone that seemingly hates all of the guts of production, that he mm-hmm. gave them footage that he took in the bathroom. I don't know. Uh, and she starts, I don't even remember exactly what she was saying, but it was something along the lines of, like, I do want to make this work. Oh, it was all that crap. Yeah, it was all the token, like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, putting which it on record me, kind of deal. Which made me think that there's way more to this couple. I even said to you last night that one of my, like, high conspiracy theories was that. In addition to the, the house being fake. It, the house I thought was CGI the whole time. <laughs> they kept having this drone shot of the front door. And this I was like, that's yeah. not the, this is a, they've doctored this up. Because when they show them leaving the front door, it doesn't look like this. Yeah. Uh, and I got really into a tailspin about that. Um, so we're kind of conspiracy theorists. Yeah. The See, like I said, we I think like, about this show too were... much. So you can't, you can't think that we feel high and mighty talking about these people. No, we're idiots too. Yeah. I was like, so you think that they hired a computer yeah. animation? <laughs> And every time they showed this creepy drone shot of the front of the house, I was like, look at this. This looks like... You know why you thought that is because that shot was the only thing in nine years of Married at First Sight that wasn't lit to all hell. Yeah, exactly. That it was the most (laughs) realistic looking thing and I couldn't handle it. Um, But I thought that they must have some off camera they must have some connection or some conversation since also like their worlds cross over via Uh social media that they... Like I said last week, they I feel like they came to an agreement off camera. Of like, we'll just get through this and mm-hmm. then we can figure it out on our own after production is done. Uh, because the way she was talking to him on camera seemed like he like it was in the no conversation. Yeah. Like, you know, we talk about this, you know, off camera and blah, blah, blah. Then I'm like, oh, do one. Are they setting this up to create a moment on the show? And then you talk me off that ledge because you're like, I don't think they're smart enough to no. go to this well, extreme. To his create level this. of anger was, I, I, if it was fake, I was like, this is an impressive performance yeah, because yeah. he was, he, <laughs> he, was he fooled me. It scared me. Uh, but the way she's talking to him was just a lot of drunk dribble, but also <laughs> it seemed like they're talking more genuinely than they have on camera and the fact that they're even continuing are you okay something fell on my face oh it might be spiders there are spiders in the house and right. one has been on me in video so it's just friends yeah, that's great. we have friends um the uh I, I feel like the fact that they're continuing this relationship Doesn't when have- even everyone online is like why are they still why wouldn't he just do a no, mindy some, and yeah. like eject from this I feel like there's some sort of camaraderie off camera that's keeping them doing this and just getting through it. Uh, So I don't know, but that's my conspiracy is that there's something else like they actually do like each other. Like he likes her enough to do this thing and finish it, but he hates production and hates that part of it where she loves the production side of it. Yeah. And so there's a weird push pull. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's either they were... Uh, strong armed a little bit into doing it because mm-hmm. they signed up for the show or yeah they came up with some, or a mixture of both somewhere but yeah what sucks though is I feel like it makes it boring like I don't mm. care about them as a couple at all yeah they shouldn't be together they know they shouldn't be together and so when it's about their relationship I'm like okay like they, they're not this is just uh, inevitable but then when it it's gets into the production stuff it's like oh this thing that's it's sort of like a lesson in uh getting out of things before they get real bad (laughs) yeah and also like tactful ways to get out of things because mindy got out of her situation with zach squeak clean yeah she wasn't calling any producers pieces of shit on camera at least except maybe the one they hired to pretend to be your friend to talk to zach i don't know where where's Lindsay? what's she up to uh, it's Lindsay and Carol Baskin is who I the two people I want to see. We've right never now. seen them in the same room. I'm, so ju- I'm just you're saying, saying you're just saying uh, pile you're just saying on the conspiracy theories. <laughs> uh, 
so they have this drunk conversation. Somehow they go to sleep. I don't know. And then the next morning, Brendan has to go to work. So he leaves. And then Michael also leaves with him because Michael has a supposed um, <laughs> dead uncle that he has to go make like flower arrangements for yeah. in the city. Uh, and he just kind of comes in in the morning and says goodbye to everyone and says he's getting a ride with production and Brandon back to the city and that maybe he'll be back later. Brandon locks himself in a production car like all rational adults do when they have a conflict of interest with someone. Yes, in an effort to not do to not be on camera, he oh. does the most dramatic thing possible. Yeah, and he comes <laughs> out of his bedroom in the morning with his hood up and his sunglasses on in the house as if like that keeps the camera from seeing him. Yes. <laughs> and then Brandon basically has to talk or I'm sorry, Michael has to talk Brandon into unlocking the car to let him in because production is like, you can either unlock the car or we can't give you a ride. Yeah. Which who knows? Again, a production the thing that they're yep. doing. And I don't know if there's any validity in that or if this is just their way of trying to get a glimpse of him on camera in I the think car. What, yeah, they wanted a shot of him driving away yeah. and being pissed. And, then, and he wasn't giving it so, to them. Yeah, in an effort to not give them a shot of him being pissed, he got out of the car and walked down the driveway by himself. Right, because he thinks that now they've roped he in... He <laughs> Yeah. He or think, looked like he was about to run away from home. <laughs> he thinks that they roped in Michael to create an elaborate scheme to get him out of the car. And I do feel bad for Michael in this moment that he's like, I'm just trying to get out of this house, man. Like, mm -hmm. let me in the car. I'm under the uh, impression that if I get in, we get to drive away. So yep. please. Then Michael leaves. They're gone for the day. They don't know if they're coming back. They find out that Michael's coming back. Brandon's staying. What a shocker. Michael comes back and then they, all of them have had their different excursions for the day. So they're all sitting down to dinner when Michael comes back and they start asking him about like how far the drive was and the traffic was to get there. And then they end up grilling him into a position of I guess Brandon was working at some festival and that he in yeah. production went to the festival yeah. rather than doing whatever funeral prep that he maybe had to do in the city. Yeah. And so they kind of catch him in another lie and Mika freaks this, out about it. It's the part where I was like, I've had enough. Yeah. At this point, I, don't I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this has got to end. I was like, where, <laughs> Make do we, it end. where do we go from here? I, at one point, I said when we had 40 minutes left, I was like, do you want to play a quick game of Scrabble? Yeah, just you like, wanted to, to like, have cleanser? a breather. Uh, but I also, I just love the idea that production got in for free at a festival that Brandon was working at. None and of that so, makes sense. And I don't even, my brain doesn't even want to see. I like to imagine that they all rode to DC, went to this music festival, had some drinks, and then brought Michael back to the house. Yeah. Because they're all trying to, they're asking him the timelines. And you can see that GIF of like, what is it, a beautiful mind of all of the, the different problems. math problems yeah. everywhere, of all of them trying to do the math on how the traffic and uh, timing would work for him to get everything done. It like, was oh, a whole no, mess. We, we had to go back to music. It's closed, and we had to get his clothes, and we had to go because then we had to drop him off at the festival. We had and they're park. like, why do you Why'd have to you park? park? Yeah, why don't you just let him park? If you just let park, because, and you're just like, Whoa. Oh, so you went to the fe you went to a music festival. You had a couple of drinks, and you came back. Michael's and, an, an, and Mika, to her credit, though, I don't mean to cut you off. Go for she it. was like, why didn't you just say that? Like, I don't think she would have been mad at him going to a music festival if he just said, like, yeah, True. we went to this music festival. But when that's like, you know, that guy can't give <laughs> straight answers. Like, yeah. he's not, he's, it's, it's not a it's a, a flaw that maybe he's working on. Maybe he's not. But you know that. And you're yeah. grilling him. And it's like oh, and rattling can, his little brain cage. And you can see the opportunity for him to speak the just pure, succinct truth. And uh -huh. when he misses it, you're like, no. No, Michael, no, just say that. Just say uh -huh. what happened, and none of them will care. And no eye contact as he's explaining yeah. it, just looking down and left and right. You're like, and then he's, even if you're telling the truth, you don't sound like you're telling the truth. Yeah. And then he says, okay, I think that's enough of me sitting at the table, which clearly you could tell that a producer beforehand was like, we just need some shots of you sitting at the oh, table yeah, yeah. with them. Okay, and that's enough. I've sat at the table. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. know what that is. The fourth wall is gone. <laughs> it's gone. You got what you need? Great. Yeah. Oh, and I don't even remember how the episode they're, actually ended. They're like three episodes away from just uploading raw footage and letting <laughs> us just I, see they, the entire thing. They, I need a reunion. I need it. I need I it. Know. And I need a really good host of the reunion that's going to actually well, grill these people. You know, we I have those stand-up shows in D.C. I at know, the end of the year. Of so I'm going to invite uh, the cool ones. Oh, Oh my god! Which oh are all my of them. god! Um, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna invite the least scary ones. I'm gonna invite the ones I've said the nicest things about. <laughs> well, you know, see you um, soon, Derek. 
<laughs> you know what was missing in this episode even more than Zach and Mindy? Mm. The experts, not a single expert no. in this whole episode. Yeah, you were like, Dr. Pepper's nowhere Where's to be found. Dr. Pepper put in her resignation. She's out. Good, she's got to get out. They all she's need working to, on Love yeah. Island somewhere. She's not in this anymore. They need to fire themselves immediately. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they. what's her name showed up again? The robot. Um, uh, Pastor Cal oh, yeah. opens it, and then oh, that's it. He's not it. in it again. He no, gives no, no, a summary no, no. about Zach and Mindy, and then they're. I'm like, to what be the- fair, I'd be out too. I'd be like, no, they can all be at the house by themselves. None of us need to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a bandaid <laughs> on a bullet bullet wound. How did the house retreat go? Oh, terrible. Great. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. So next season, then we'll just start casting. Oh wow! And then, though, one part I want to touch on yeah. because it's so sweet and savory. Okay, um, is circling back to Derek and Katie. Yes, uh, and Katie saying, you know, people speak their truth. Mm-hmm. And Katie says, in the next morning when she's waking up, she's not drunk oh, yeah. anymore. She's clearly got that wake up. Mm-hmm. Cute, cuddly. Did I do something bad? Exactly. Did I do that? Oh, I shit the bed? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you shit the bed a lot. But yeah, and you're still being nice to me? Okay. Yeah, cool. I'll keep this going till I shit the bed again <laughs> tonight. But she was like, I always feel like we just get so much closer oh, after we fight. Yeah. And I was like, run. Derek, oh, run. <laughs> yeah. Run. And then she's going, is that normal? And she loves <laughs> the fact that that's a little toxic because that toxicity is interesting yes. to her. And that makes them interesting, and that they're that not boring. That is what she thinks maturity is. Yeah. Folks. Wow. Listen, when it comes to fighting with your partner, you don't, <laughs> don't. have to do it. <laughs> you can true. actually choose not to, but be forewarned that if you choose not to, sometimes it will infuriate them even more. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they won't give them what they want. Well, I really didn't think that we would... It's been over an hour already, and I didn't think that we would have a full hour's worth of stuff to say about this. I did. We didn't even get into Lego Masters. Lego Masters or, hey, do you remember Susan? Oh, Five Guys a Week. We can go a little long. We got to... Sure. Okay. So Five Guys a Week. Did we talk about this last week? We talked about... I've talked about it a lot in other capacities. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, not on the, I don't think much on the episode. Um, we maybe mentioned it as something we're watching, but. Five Guys a Week is a British reality dating competition show in which a female has five men that they've hand selected out of a bunch of men mm-hmm. to come live at their house for a week. And by the end of the week, there's one man standing that is the person yes. that they have no, chosen. No vows, no excursions no. in the house at home. Maybe a night out with all the guys. Right. Oh, and, uh, and this week's episode, there was ugh. a woman named Susan who was in her 60s. Grace, She's, tell them about Susan. Oh, God. Susan is the saving reality show contestant that we all need. Angel. Angel. She's been widowed for like eight years, but she's ready to start a new life. She ugh. she believes that she deserves love and she deserves a relationship and she deserves someone to yep. just like be support her and be sweet. And oh, my God, it's the sweetest episode. It was... It was like how old do you think she did you say she's she's in her 60s 60s. because all of the men were between like 60 and 65 yeah and um it was like it was so much in a completely different way than married at first sight you know how they say love is stronger than hate yeah the emotions that i Uh, felt watching that episode of television which is so loving and sweet and hilarious and like It's British, so they're so much more blunt and real and articulate when they're blunt and real that, like, they communicate, it moves so fast because they're not playing games. Yeah, they're just like, and they're very direct and they're very, Mm -hmm. like, like in one of the previous episodes, one of the guys uh, confesses that he went to to anger management and then the next yeah. morning he just looks at a guy and he goes to be honest man everything about you just kind of irks me yeah, and you're I was designed, like this is amazing yeah you've been perfectly designed to trigger me yeah <laughs> yeah you've been perfectly <laughs> honestly, perfectly designed to trigger me uh, it's so good but this episode was just these older single people who mm. all have different stories and then you're watching this woman decide among uh, the guys and we kind of our top two made it as the top two as the top which two. is always fun part of these shows you get to be like I like this one yeah um, it's just our form of um, um, like sports, exactly. Our yeah. teams made it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was, I was, I had tears Same. streaming down. Where there's a scene basically where they go out for the evening and they do like a Peaky Blinders themed oh. night out, and they all get dressed up like they're bootleggers, the, they're the, so cute. the, the roaring twenties or whatever, whenever that was. And uh, the next morning, Susan, this sweet 
old, still very young at heart mm-hmm. uh, woman. Uh, very vivacious, which is yeah. not a word I use very often or have ever, maybe. But uh, <laughs> she's like in her hammock crying and it looks all in sad. A, she's in a robe, this white mm-hmm. furry robe with her hood up and she goes and lays in her hammock yeah. in the backyard and she just starts crying to herself. Yeah, minus the crying it reminded me a lot of you in yeah, the mornings. Yeah, no, I, that's why I was like, I get you, Susan! <laughs> yeah, the hoodie with the, the built-in hood with the uh, yeah. the bathrobe, but she goes into the bath or the kitchen and she sees one of the guys and uh, who's this sweet sort of metrosexual mm-hmm. older gentleman very soft-spoken and very like Seems very emotionally intelligent. Yeah. And uh, he's like, oh, you know, I saw you out there and it just looked like you might need, some, you know, some of your me time or whatever. And she's yeah. like, oh, you can come out now. And they like talk for a little bit and she starts crying and she's like, that was one of the most magical nights I've ever had. I never thought I'd experience that. That was such an incredible thing. And I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, she is on the the last part of her life, mm-hmm. essentially, the last era. And she just is on a TV show that most people never experience. Yeah. And she goes out with five guys who are all well, doting on her. Well, she went out with her. like three guys, three guys at this yeah, point. At that yeah. point, yeah. Uh, three, you're right. But I was like, I bet that is the most uh, incredible experience to have late in life, especially. Right. And then I was just like, this is over. So this is so beautiful. Beautiful. Susan deserves love. She deserves this. Yeah. Oh, and she you could tell like she hasn't put herself in that vulnerable of a position before to be like wooed and taken out by men, uh-huh. uh, let alone three men yeah. all vying for her that she is the prize. And she was just so emotionally overwhelmed by it that yep. also it was fun to watch people in their 60s ha- handle their hangover because <laughs> clearly yeah. they all hadn't been done like a night like that in a very long time. So they're all just being a little slow moving in the morning. Yep. slower than they normally were and like but they're all still so freaking sweet it took me till like my 30s to realize that my parents get hangovers oh yeah where i'll be like oh okay my mom i can still never worse. tell my dad i can kind of tell yeah. but it's always like they've always been like they seem to be just peppy i guess right. you know as but a also kid, these guys it. are all from the uk so i feel like their ability to conquer their hangover is so much stronger than yeah. us and Oh, it was just sweet, sweet, sweet. I, the it's also no one's interested in a hangover at that age because you've yeah. done it. So it's not, no one needs to be like, wow, we really did it last no, night. No, there's nothing to prove. Yeah. They, yeah, the, our biggest mistake is watching them in the wrong, watching Married at First Sight and Five Guys a Week in the wrong order. We should have watched Five Guys a Week after Married at First Sight. Five Guys in a House, right? Five Guys a Week. Oh, Five Guys a Week. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was okay. Dead, dead wrong. Um, <laughs> five Guys, yeah, but I will say normally that show is is the similar to Mary yeah, yeah. in the sense of you just root for the worst person or find the worst person. Yeah, but it's still very, this was an exceptionally sweet episode. It so if you have the opportunity to watch that program, go for it. Um, yeah, you good? You feel good? I think we're good. The only other thing is I want to really um, highlight and appreciate Kara from Lego Masters. Um, one of the greatest reality show contestants I've ever seen in a very long time. And I hope that in some capacity on some reality TV show, we get to see more of her. Absolutely. I'm putting that into the universe. Thoughts are things. Give me more Kara. Absolutely. I agree entirely, Grace. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of Pile It On. Um, (laughs) Even if you don't watch Married at First Sight, maybe there's something to glean here. Hopefully. Otherwise, it just sounds like a train wreck. But Or maybe it's interesting. Tell us in the comments. Let us know. Um, You can subscribe on uh, iTunes and Spotify Mm -hmm. as well. And uh, Google Play, I believe. Mm. And I think something like uh, Stitcher, one of those things. But wherever you get your wherever podcast. Wherever you get them, you can find it. And uh, otherwise, the videos will probably be on my channel, youtube.com slash Elliot Morgan. You mm-hmm. can go check out Grace at youtube.com slash It's Grace and all sorts of other fun things. Thanks for that plug. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Stop. Drop. Shut Time. them down. Open up shop. <laughs> <laughs>